It feels like there's a battle for our souls happening in this moment. Like in our times. And I say this as an observation. I feel like I'm in touch with my soul. In my heart. And that I have an inner knowing and an inner voice that's coming from me. Right? But I also think that that there are some people that are maybe not in touch with that so much. You know, um, maybe they haven't had a chance to get there. Maybe they've been so busy with career, so busy with their raising their kids, busy with their hobbies, busy, busy running from pain, busy distracting themselves. So they don't hear that voice. Say a couple of years ago, I went through a really tough time. Um, I, I, I got divorced and um, sold a business that I created that meant a lot to me. It took a lot from me. It was my baby. And it was nothing I wanted. Um, but it happened for me. I truly believe that to this day. And with all of that loss, I had worked hard to create this life, this, to have this home in the suburb, to have this family, to have this business. I'd sacrificed so much. And then like that, I lost it. Like over, a, it was like a three month period. I think I've been building longer than that, but it actually, everything just kind of dissolved, you know, within this three month period. And I was questioned, you know, like my reality, I no longer recognized it. My family was gone. The dogs were gone. The house was empty. My, the business that I had, I, I don't, trying to figure out how to share these things. Like I was unable to, I did no, I no longer recognized um, the people that I was involved with there. I, I'll just put it that way. And I think that was because I went through such a change and a transformation. I started doing ketamine therapy. I started opening my heart, changing my vibration, right? Listening and hearing my soul. And as I did that, the other things started to fall off of my life like dead skin. And that was very painful. It's painful to transform, man. You know, it's not easy. Um, but all of that to say, getting back to the people that I feel like are most vulnerable to having their soul taken by another, by an entity, by an organization, by a group. Those, I think the people that have not found their soul yet, that haven't heard their voice, that don't know themselves, that don't possess that true love inside of themselves. See, if you've gone through what I've gone through, a dark night of the soul, several of them, you've experienced loss, you've experienced pain, the loss of a loved one, divorce, loss of business, loss of revenue, loss of friendships. If you've experienced that, you know it's cracked you open. You become, I don't know what the, you've become, but you've, you know, I think you know, it's like you've become You've grown stronger. You become more aware, more conscious. And, and before you judge, you know, because I think, you know, if we want to look at it left and right, that's what we have, right? A lot of people on the right are judging the left. The left people are judging the right people. And then they're, you know, and they're both on the right side, right? They both believe they're right. Well, what if there's just no right or wrong? Everybody has their reasoning for being where they are. So if you look at the left and the right, let's talk about this. It, uh, people compare it uh, to the left and the right wings of the bald eagle, of the bird, which is our nation's symbol, right? You have a left wing and a right wing. I want to ask you, what's in the middle of the bird? What's in the middle? The heart. And the heart is very vulnerable. The heart is tender. The heart is loving. The heart knows nothing else. Hate cannot live in the heart. Only love can live in the heart. And if you think hate can live in the heart, it can't. That's perceived. That's a perception. 
and it's based on a broken heart, a wound. And if you notice a heart in your body is actually protected by a rib cage, right? Because it is vulnerable. So most people, I would think, don't want to be in the middle. A lot of people may not feel safe in the middle because that's vulnerable. I'm on the left, I'm on this side, I'm on the right, I'm on this side. But if I'm in the middle, I, I, oh man, I, I, I feel like, am I alone? My heart's exposed. People can crush it, stomp on it, right? But you gotta remember there's a rib cage around your heart for a reason, right? This is, <laughs> so you have to consider that. But that's why I think a lot of people may not want to be vulnerable and be in that middle. And because the thing is, is you can be in touch with your soul. You can be in touch with your inner voice. And I think if you truly are, I believe that you reside in the middle. And what does that mean? What does that mean to me, residing in the middle? Some people might say, I have a friend that's like, you can't be in the middle. <laughs> you have to pick a side. Okay. And he's on the right, by the way. Anybody that tells me I, I have to pick a side, anybody that tells you that, you should be highly suspicious. They don't get to decide what you pick. You get to decide what you pick. See, this is where the inner knowing comes from. The heart, right? <sighs> the inner knowing. Being in touch with your soul. So, you can have your own beliefs. And maybe your beliefs could be more right. Maybe they could be more left in how you think about government, politics, and policies and still be in your heart. And that's probably the most ideal place to be because now you are it's all about tolerance. You have tolerance for that other side. And when, you, when you're in your heart, because see, that's love, that's acceptance. Hey, you're welcome here. And in, it's because when you pick a side, it's about judgment and you start to hate your fellow man and we're all connected, you know, but you think about the heart and I lost my train of thought. I had a really good point. <laughs> um, where when you reside in the heart, in that middle ground, when you can maintain that, you can allow others to be where they are. Think about it this way. You may have a parent or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, right? And, you know, obviously your <laughs> character defects, your flaws are gonna be more noticeable to them, right? They're gonna see them, whatever they may be. But guess what? They still love you in spite of your flaws, right? Go figure. And, and I think that that is unconditional love at its finest. That is God's source universe love, right? So why, why don't we practice that tolerance towards fellow man, towards, towards our people, right? Towards the people, we're the same. Right? We're the same. So why don't we practice that? And I think that truly, like for me, it seems like the best example. Because if you're on the right or the left and you're, you know, shouting names and name calling and, you know, you have to pick a side and all this, this is not a good example, I don't think, for either side. Right? And... What I, what I do when I see someone that has extreme views, or, you know, be it left or right, I get curious. I used to get upset about that. Prior to my transformation, I was on a side and, and not tolerant towards that other side. Um, and I was angry. I was quite angry all the time and uh, you know, paranoia and all kinds of stuff started coming up from that. Um, I broke out in hives, all kinds of stuff, right? 
Is it called hives? No. What is this stuff uh, that you get uh, from chicken pox? What is that called? Shingles. Yeah. But since I've, you know, gone through transformation, I've done some psychedelics, I've done some work, I've gone within, I've spent a lot of time alone. I lost a lot. I started to just be okay with where people are and get curious about them. What is their worldview? How did they get to that place? See, I think this is a, this is something that, this is how we can learn from each other. So instead of like, you know, judging people, what I want to do is understand them. Wow. You feel this way. Tell me a little bit about your life. How did you grow up? Where were you born? What's your sign? I always like to ask what people's signs are. I don't know. Um, you know. What has your life experience been like? You know, what, who hurt you? Everybody's been hurt, either by a parent, a relative, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a teacher, you know, a stranger, right? People have experienced major traumas in their life. And those traumas and those people that they've been hurt by shape their worldview. And then that's the filter in which they see the world. And yet we're judging them. We're judging them. But they're just people. They're hurt people, <laughs> you know? So <sighs> that's what I do. I get curious. I just want to know more now. And I notice that that's one of the things that helps me. Um, I'm not afraid to debate with somebody. I'm not afraid to call somebody's point out, but I do it in such a way that is coming from a place of curiosity and facts, not name calling, not insulting, not hating, right? But hey, let's, let me, let me you know, call this out. Let me just talk, <laughs> bring this to the surface, which can trigger people, right? And when you trigger people, you're exposing a wound in them. And when you open that wound, they can begin to heal if they allow it. Look, this is not my job. I'm not trying to do that. But when somebody is triggered, that's what's happening. That wound is being opened. So yeah, just my thoughts on left and the right and living in the middle, finding your soul and you know, tolerating your fellow human during this, this difficult time that we're in. You know, the digital age, going through this, um, you know, election year um, can be very stressful on many. People are so worried on either side about who gets elected and, and what that means for our country and our future, right? This is, seems very real. And so I'm sure there's a lot of people that are feeling intense stress. And so what can we do to relieve that? This is right here. Get curious. Find our heart center. Find the middle. Remember. Remember. You can still be left or right. You can have your opinions and your worldview. That's your inner. That's what everything that happened in your life that led up to this point that makes you left or right, however you view this world. That's your life experience. That's your soul's journey. If they were you, you would be them, vice versa. Think about that. So, yeah. Now maybe judgment isn't the answer, but more curiosity. Curiosity of our fellow man to learn. And I think we might be surprised the more we ask questions instead of name calling and judging and hating. So I just, I just wanted to share that with you all. And, and uh, yeah, find your heart.